Okay, so yesterday we were looking at um, finding the slope of line and writing the equation in point slope form. So we're going to continue on with that a little bit today. We're going to use that for this first problem right here. Um, and then we're going to look at finding the regression line with the calculator. I taught y'all how to do this in Algebra 1, um, so it should be pretty easy. Um, and then I'm going to let you finish your assignment from yesterday. In Abigail's case, you can start your assignment from yesterday. Um, all right, so um, this first part, they're talking about scatter plots. So if you have a scatter plot, um, you can tell if the relationship between two variables for the most part, we're talking about X and Y. Now, they don't always give it in terms of X and Y. They give you, a lot of times, variables in like real world problems. So they'll use, like in this problem down here, they're using D and T, D. Um, in this case, is a distance as it relates to feet. And um, I think depth, yeah, depth. And then T is uh, a temperature, okay? But they still are can be graphed on an X and Y axis, okay? So we're always still gonna tie back to an X and a Y, okay? So, a positive correlation, we could still graph it on an X and Y axis with a scatter plot. You would have a bunch of dots that would, in general, create a positive um, slope. Everybody okay with that? So, you're just putting some dots on there that creates a positive slope. Everybody okay with that? Okay, if we were going to see a scatter plot that had a negative correlation again you would have dots but in general they would slope in a downward direction everybody good there if there was no correlation then you would just have kind of random dots all over the place and you really could not create i know those are really white so they're a little bit hard to see but in general you could not draw a line through those dots in a positive or a negative gener in general direction. Everybody, does that make sense, everybody? Again, this is like repeat algebra one information. All right, so down here we're gonna talk about line of best fit or the regression line. Um, so this says, given a positive or negative correlation, is it possible or it is possible to write and predict an equation called that line of best fit? They are giving us these points or these ordered pairs. They're giving it to us in a table. It's still ordered pairs. Everybody okay with that? <coughs> All right. They want us to first put them on this graph. All right. If you notice here, remember these, the first values given are always the X. The second values are always the Y's because input's always X, output's always Y. Why does my phone always ring? Hello. Yes, sir. Supposed to be in his table of contents. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'll explain when that video is not running. Okay. Alright, so if you notice here, like on our X values, because this goes to 15, and I counted these lines earlier, we can go by ones across the bottom. So this would be 0, 1, and I'm going to kind of skip on over 2, 3, 4, here would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, here is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15 falls at this next to the last line. Okay, so I numbered those. But when you look at your Y axis, if you look, your smallest number is 76, so I'm not, no, I'm not starting at zero here, okay? Now, this would be zero, but our smallest value is 76, so what we're going to have is, is a broken graph. Y'all should be familiar with, like, a broken graph. Y'all are, correct? Uh, no, not really. Okay, so what that means is when you have a graph that has, like, this little zigzaggy business at the bottom, that means the graph is not starting at zero. We're going to jump up at the graph instead of starting at zero because it's just a bunch of empty space. It's a waste of space on the graph. Does that make sense? So we're going to jump up the graph and we're going to start about, um, I'm going to start about the third line up. So about right here and I'm going to call this 70 rather than having a whole bunch of empty space at the bottom of the graph 
we're going to have a break. So basically this zigzag at the bottom basically says we're skipping all this space. That's what that means. So anytime you see a graph that has a little zigzag business at the bottom, it means zero, skip a bunch of space, we're going to start at 70. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go 70, and then I'm going to go by two. So like 72, 74, 76, 78. So 80 would be right here, 82, 84, 86, 88. Then that would put 90 right here. Is everybody okay with that? It just allows us to utilize the space on the graph more rather than having a bunch of wasted space on the graph. Does that make sense, Bethany? Okay. All right. Okay, so now we're going to put these ordered pairs on here. So I have 0 and 85. So here's 82, 84. So 85 is like in between those two lines. So there's 0 and 85. Then I have 4 and 82. So here's 80. So 82 is here. Then I have 7. So 5, 6, 7, and... 81, so here's 80, so 81 is like in between there. Then I have 10 and 79, so that's going to be right below that line. I have 12, 12 and 77, so let's see, there's 72, 4, 6, there's 77 right there. And then I have 15. And 76, there's 72, 4, 76 right there. Now, obviously, that does not make an exact straight line. And I know y'all really can't see my points, but I'm going to assume in the 11th grade, y'all can put points on a graph. Okay, so when you do a line of best fit, and y'all are just going to have to sketch a line the best you can. I happen to have a ruler. So when you try to do your line of best fit, you're not going to be able to connect all the points, so you generally try to do a line that goes between the points as best as possible. So mine looks something like that, okay? And I drew one this morning with my other class, and it probably doesn't look exactly the same as this one. So it's okay. It's not a big deal. We get the general idea of what it looks like. Is everybody okay with that? All right, and I went out too far because I'm going to need this space over here. All right, so we get this general line of best fit, all right? Now, what it says over here is they want us to, you, you really don't even need the graph, but we can see that it has what type of slope? Yeah. A native slope, all right. So then it says use two ordered pairs to write the line of best fit. All right, first off, what is the easiest ordered pair to use here? 0 and 85, and when you look at the other numbers, what's a really other, what's, what's the other easy number to use here? Look at your x values. 10. 10. That's the other one that's easy to use. Now, do we have to use those two? No, you can really use any two that you want. Those are just the easiest two. So I'm going to use 0 and 85, and I'm going to use 10 and 79. Now, just like we did yesterday, we've got to find the slope first. So to find slope, we do what? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So Y2, I'm going to do 79 minus 85 over 10 minus 0, which makes that nice and easy. 79 minus 85 gives you what? Negative 6. Negative 6 and 10 minus 0 is 10. So when I simplify that fraction, I get... Three. Negative 3 over 5. Okay, so then when I want to write my equation, I have y minus, and I can really pick either point, but which one's the easier one to use? Yeah, the one that has the zero in it, because then something's going to go away, which I like. So I have y minus 85 is equal to negative 3 fifths x minus zero. Everybody okay with that? This is what we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. All right, so y minus 85 stays, and then I have negative 3 fifths times x, which gives me negative 3 fifths x, and then when I multiply negative 3 fifths times 0, I have nothing, which is nice because it's gone, right? Now what do I do? Add 
add 85 to the other five, other side. So now I have y is equal to negative 3 fifths x plus 85. Now I have the line of best fit based on the information that was given. Everybody okay? All right, so this is pretty much what we did yesterday. The only difference is they wanted us to put these points on a table and it just, it's just, that's the only thing really much different from yesterday. We just had multiple points and you had to pick two. Everybody okay with that? All good? Okay, now they want us to predict the temperature if, so I'm predicting T temperature, which in this case is my X or Y. y. That's my Y, so I'm predicting Y if the lake is at 25 feet. Well, my 25 feet stands for what here? My X variable, okay. So I'm gonna take my equation and I'm gonna plug in 25 in place of X. So I have Y is equal to negative 3 fifths times 25 plus 85. Get your calculator, get after it. Which should be really easy because the 25 and the 5 cancel and give you negative 3 times 5, which is what? What's negative 3 times 5? Okay, so I have negative 15 plus 85. So therefore, Y is equal to what here? 70, and I'm talking temperature, so it's degrees, and it better be Fahrenheit because if it's Celsius, your skin's gonna melt off your body. All right, so that would be the temperature if the lake, if you're at 25 feet. Everybody okay with that? Because the lake's hot. If there's only 25 feet of water. The less water there is, the hotter the temperature is. Does that make sense? All good there. Okay, down here, I'm gonna go through these with you, so I'm not gonna sit here and read all these, but these are the instructions for finding the regression line in your calculator. I'm gonna tell you this right here. This says enter possibly twice. It's more than that. It's like four or five times in your calculator. Uh, my computer, uh, in my small zipper pocket. Okay, all good? All right, flip away your paper. All right, so in your calculator, hit the stat button. It's, uh, oh yeah, turn it on. Hit the stat button, go to your green alpha button, two buttons to the right of that is your stat button. Everybody find it? Hit edit, which means it's already highlighted at edit, so all you gotta do is hit enter. Do you have anything in your tables? You shouldn't. Okay. All right, so in L1, which is the first column, these are your X values, put them in L1. These are your Y values, put them in L2. So put your number, hit enter, put your number, hit enter, and so on. We did this in after the one, right? Yes, we did. Everybody texts me about the sound like that TikTok sound. Siri. When you get to the bottom L1, hit your arrow to the right and it'll take you over to the L2 column for your Y values. If you mess up, you can arrow over and clear something if you need to. Okay, do you have your two columns in? Everybody got them? You might not have them. Okay. Once you have both of those columns entered, you should look something like this, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, now hit your stat button again. Now arrow over to where it says calc. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, on your calculator, if you look, this one right here says linear regression and this one right here says linear regression. Which one do we want? AX plus B. We want AX plus B. That's number four. So go down to number four. All right, this right here, if you look, your X list, that's your X values, we put them in L1, right? Your Y list, your Y values, we put them in L2. That's how it's supposed to be. Now, this is where, remember, it said enter maybe twice. Mm -mm. We hit one, two, three, four. We hit it five times. I told you it was more than that. You hit it five times. There's your value. Oh, wait, we're, hold on, put it back. Huh? Put your 
believe that? That's what you should have gotten. No, uh that's not uh, what yeah, you should have gotten. No, I must have popped something wrong. Yeah, that's not what you should have gotten. Okay. All right. So we are going to round. I probably top something else. Yeah. Um, all right. We are going to round in the hundreds place. Tell me what y'all got. Because I know what you should have gotten. 1.83. That's what you should have gotten. 1.8. What? 1.83x should be minus. Minus 16 point. Should like 16.49 something, right? Seven. Yeah. Okay, which rounds to 16 point what? Five. 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 All right, so that's what you're going to write. Okay, so now you have your equation. So you're going to do this every time, okay? Now, then hit second mode, and that'll take you back to your regular, like this screen. All right? Okay, now it says predict the number of suitcases, because that's what we're talking about, people in suitcases. Predict the number of suitcases on an airplane with 500 people. So where am I putting in 500? X. In for X. So Y is equal to 1.83 times 500 minus 16.5. Calculate. Well, I can give it to you, but how long is half a suitcase? Or half a suitcase. All right, so you get Y equals what? 898.5. So we're going to say about how many suitcases? 800 and what? 899 suitcases. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's your answer. Like That's what I'm looking for. All good there? I do remember. You should. Like, and we spent several days working with this on the calculator, even though this is like one of the easier things that we do because calculator does all the work. Okay, here. All right, the table below shows the population in thousands. So if this is 10, it actually means what? 10,000 what? 700. Is everybody okay with that? All right, population in thousand during certain years. All right. So if we're starting at 2000 and this is zero, that means this year is 2000. Does that make sense? <coughs> so year zero is 2000. So what year is this right here? 2015. Is everybody okay with that? I don't like it. But Wait, which one? Okay, if this is since 2000, then they used a zero right here. That means zero represents year 2000. Which means this would be oh, okay. 2015. Is everybody okay with that? I thought your point was three. Yeah, no, no, no. This means 2015. Is everybody good with that? So you're saying that like three, 2003. 2003. Yes. Okay. But they're using, when they put the data in, they use 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Okay, go to your stat real quick and go to edit. Now, here's what I need, here's what I want to remind you. If you go all the way up to the top to L2, Hit clear and hit enter, it'll clear the whole column. And then go up and over to L1, hit clear and hit enter. Do not, make sure you listen to me very carefully. Do not go up there and hit delete in your L1 or your L2 column because if you do that, it will completely delete L1 and L2 out of there. And I have to go use the Googler to remember how to fix it because I second plus seven one two will not fix your calculator. And, and you lose your calculator privileges for the entire six weeks and I'm not fixing it for you. Thank you. And you're using one of the mobile crappy calculators. So can we just instead of trying to do all that and risking that, can we just do second memory seven one two and just recode? Can that because right that will clear everything out. Yeah, that's what I do. But I just go up and hit click just here's the deal. Don't ever use, I like never use the delete button because like delete button. Where is the delete button? It's right here and I like never use it because. I only use it if I have to run. Because yeah, deleting so things is just not good. Clearing things is always okay. Walk with it. <laughs> okay, so now go up and put your data in. So you're using I zero, three, six, blah, 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 blah. Put your oh, stuff so in. we're not using 20 whatever? People. No, you're using zero, three, six. You're using the numbers they give you in the table. So we can enter our population numbers the way they give them. Yeah, give it to right? use them the way okay. they give them to you. Okay. Use it the way they gave it to you. Uh, Putting your data in, okay. L1 and L2. 
Then you go to stat. Oh. Then you go to stat. Calc. Calc. Number four. And you hit enter five times. Hey, Doc, smell this. It smells like what? I don't want to smell it then. I think it smells like a fruit roll up. Okay, so we get y is equal to, does everybody have it? Haley, what'd you get? Um, I think I got 0.2x, okay. Plus 10.64. 10.64. Did everybody get that? Yes? Okay, so then it says predict the population. Which variable is my population? Y. Okay, so for predicting y, then I'm putting in. Y. Or then I'm plugging in what? Y. Okay, so what am I going to plug in? Am I going to plug in 2025? 20, no. I'm just going to plug in 25. Okay, so I'm going to plug in. I'm going to have y is equal to 0 0.2 times 25 plus 10.64. Okay, give me a number. So what? y is equal to what? Oh. 15.64. What oh? Okay, that's why I was confused. Ow. 15.64. Okay. Okay. 15.64. Okay, now, what does 15.64 represent here? Because oh. it's not 15, the population isn't 15 people. What is the population? Thousand. Approximately what? 15,000 what? 640. 640 people. Does that make sense? Yes, yes no, maybe so. Yes, it does. Okay. All good? Now I will say on your assignment, because you do not have one on your on the notes that are like this, which I don't love. But on the assignment, they do give you one where they're giving you y and you have to work it backwards, which means you would have to subtract or whatever. You'd have to move this over and then divide, which you're just working an equation backwards. You don't have to do that. Okay. All right. Here, the table below shows the salary in what? Millions. Millions. So this means 2.1 million. So 2,100,000 made by the highest paid Major League Baseball player during certain years. All right, I don't want to put these big giant numbers in, so I'm going to change these. We're going to make this year zero. So if this is year zero, this is how many years later? Six. Six, Six which would make this Two. eight year from here, eight years I after that. So then this is going to be 11 years after that which makes this 13 years later, and this one would be 16 years later. Okay, so those are gonna be your numbers. Have to do it like that on our assignment? Don't have to, no. Okay, yeah, In okay. fact, on your assignment, you're gonna leave the numbers that they give you. So like on number four, we would have to type that in the calculator? You're gonna type it in the calculator just like that. Okay, all right, that's cool. Those aren't numbers that you can really change to anything specific. What's after the nine? No. Nine, nine. nine. Okay. 1.29. I was rounding it to the wrong spot. No, you're good. 1.29. Okay. Is that what anybody, is that what everybody else got? Oh, oh. I clicked the button. Yeah, there. Oh, I got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everybody's comfortable putting your data in and getting a regression line. Yes, Michaela, did you get it, baby? Let me did you get it? Okay. All right. Over here. So we want to predict the salary, which is your Y value. 
All right, so we're doing y is equal to 1.22 in the year 2020. All right, so we're looking at 2020. How many years is 2020 after 1985? 35, 35 years. So in place of x, we're putting in 35. Minus 1.29. Bank making that kind of money. Huh? 41 plus 4 minus 3 minutes. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, but with COVID, they ain't making that kind of money. I don't think we making millions of dollars. COVID ain't making that kind of money. I wish I made half. I won't make half that much money in my whole lifetime. Bro? For real, I might I make a teacher salary and don't get paid. Okay. It should though. I won't make a fourth of that much money in my lifetime. I feel like teachers should be really, really highly paid. All right, I get paid by the government, so that's fun fact. All right, and they keep all the money for themselves as a politician. All right, the table below shows the mileage M on six cars that were recently traded in along with their value V. All right, so M is their mileage, V is their value. What is the, what kind of slope do we have here? Negative. It's a negative slope. Is that logical? Not really, no. Really? The more miles you put on the car, what oh. happens to its value? Oh, it goes right. Down. Super logical. Like that's the nice thing about these problems. They should be logical if you look at what they're about. Okay, they should be very logical. All right, go find me the regression line. The regression Holy equation. Crap. Put them in exactly the way you see them. Okay, what you got now? So we're plugging that into X. Okay, so negative approximately or about what she said $12,695.45 that would be about its value everybody good there oh, really? that would be about what it's worth I didn't, I didn't get that sign. yeah you can do your little wavy equal sign that should have been what you got I didn't get that negative point zero nine times thirteen two fifty eight And then add that to 13888.67. Did you forget a negative sign? I don't know. Okay. 
That was easier for me to pick it up and do it. Okay, so time. All right, so you have a table there that has time. Here's the issue with time. Time is a base 60 system. Everything about time, including our months and everything, is a base 60 system. Okay, 60 seconds, 60 minutes, all of that. Okay, 12 months divisible. I mean, it goes in 60, right? Okay, that's why there's like 30 days. All that. Everything. Our time is a 60 system. But our number system is a base 10 system, okay? So you have to think about things on like a clock. So I'm going to do it like this because it's a little bit easier, okay? So from here to here is how many minutes on your clock? 15, 15 minutes, okay? So our clock is divided into four sections, right? Mm -hmm. Our base 10 system can also be divided into four sections. Now, if you notice the way they gave you times, they gave them to you in 15 increments, right? So here is the half hour at 30 minutes, right? Yes? yes. And then this would be at how many minutes? 45. 45 minutes. And then that would be at the whole hour right up here, right? At the whole hour. Yes? These aren't a big issue. They gave you six o'clock. That's okay. You can put in six o'clock, right? So if I'm at 6.30, what do I need to put in for my time? Because I can't put in 6.3. What do I have to put in? I have to put in 6.5 or whatever they gave you. I don't know what the times are. I just know that's, that's how they give it to you. All right, but if I'm at here and I'm at 6.15, I can't put in 6.15. I've got to put in 6.25 because remember, when I say it's a quarter after, it's because my, my time is divided into... Four, it's in four quadrants, okay? So time, I have to put it in 6.25, not 6.15. So over here at 45 minutes, I have to put it in as what? 0.75. So they, when you put your times in, right above where it has 15 minutes, make sure you put it in as 0.25, and where your, where your 45 minutes is, you put it in as 0.75. Is everybody okay with that? Because if you don't, your times are gonna be messed up. Everybody good? Okay, the other one where it gives you um, the 2002, 2003, I would just put it in as is. I wouldn't change those to year zero or anything like that. Just put it in as is. Everybody good there? So for like six o'clock or 11, is it just? Yeah, just put the time as is. But if they give you like 6.15 or 6.45 or whatever it is, put those in as a two five or a half or a 75. Otherwise, if you try to put in 30, like your your numbers are not going to work. Does that make sense? Because you have to think of that there. You have to convert it from a sixty system to a ten system. Does that make sense? Okay. Otherwise, I think everything else. I think you should be okay. Now those word problems. The other one that I had people have some issues with was number five on the front with the mileage. Did y'all have trouble with that, or did y'all get that one figured out? Okay, one, they're talking about a 30-gallon gas tank, okay? All right, but then it says your 30-gallon gas tank. Okay, think about this. If you know how far you're going to travel, so let's just say, because I'm not going to give you the answer, but let's just say you're going to go 500 miles, okay? And you know that, you're, um, that you get about 21 miles per gallon. How are you going to calculate about how much... If you're going to have to fill up or not. 500 divided by 21 miles per gallon or whatever you've got. Okay? So keep that in mind when you're writing your equation for number five. Okay? Yes? Okay. All right. You divide your miles per gallon by the gallons of gas in the tank. 
Well, you're starting with a full tank, so you have to think. You're, I mean, your equation's a linear equation, right? You're starting with a full tank. This is kind of like the candle problem. We started with a whole candle, right? And then it went down from there. So where are we starting with? A full candle. I mean, or a full tank of gas, which is how much in this problem? You're starting with 30, and then you're going to go down from there, right? So what is your equation going to start with? What does your equation start with in that problem? Because remember, the first thing you can do is write an equation, right? Your full tank of gas, which is 30. So you're starting with 30. And then you're going to drive your truck. So what's going to happen? It's going to go down. So you're going to have 30 minus. Okay, but you're going to have 30 minus. Okay, you've got to attach that X. So how is that going to look? Well, I know, but I'm not multiplying my miles times 21. What am I doing? What did Mallory say a while ago? You've got to divide my number of miles by my, which is, in this case, the average is what? What did they tell you in the problem? You get an, on average how much? 21. And that will tell you whatever is left over, whatever they're asking you. Okay, so 